These pictures, taken during Operation Hydra 8, show for the first time in the world divers working efficiently at a depth of 530 meters. The program for developing hydrogen diving undertaken by COMEX since 1983 has demonstrated beyond doubt the advantageous properties of this gas, particularly that of eliminating the high pressure nervous syndrome, which is the chief limiting factor in helium oxygen diving. The principal objectives of Hydra 6, the preparatory phase for Hydra 8, were selection of divers for the open sea dive, testing of individual diving gear, and gathering of physiological data. Psychometric measurements were made by administering daily divers tests, number similarities, ball bearing tests, etc., at 500 meters depth, and with optimum results as regards performance. The physiological research carried out during the dive involved extensive equipment and personnel, doctors, physiologists, and technicians. The diver is fitted with sensors for recording such data as core temperature, electrocardiogram, breathing gas parameters. Twenty-two underwater dives were carried out during the course of Hydra 6. The diver takes his place on the underwater ergometer to perform an exertion test with cardiorespiratory monitoring. The temperature of the gas inhaled and exhaled is measured by thermoprobes. A mass spectrometer measures the composition of the breathing gas in real time. Ventilatory resistance is checked by measuring the differential pressure between inspiration and expiration. The positive results of these tests and checks made it possible for us to go ahead with the sea dive at 520 meters. Hyperbaric tremor appeared in three of the divers upon arrival at 180 meters on Heliox, but this completely disappeared after the switch to hydrogen mix. No problems with vision were observed at 500 meters. Between dives, the psychometric tests continued. Brain activity was measured by electrodes fixed to the diver's scalp, which produced periodic electroencephalograms both day and night. The diving program in the pool chamber continues. The diver must build a model, a puzzle, with lengths of piping. The diver is kitted up with an X-Lite helmet and bellout system, the latest gear designed and made by Comex Pro. The Boss backpack is connected to the helmet and provides sufficient gas for the diver to return to the bell in good time if his umbilical supply fails for some reason. After 96 hours at 500 and 520 meters, the eight Hydra 6 divers are decompressed. In hydroleox decompression, the hydrogen is gradually removed from the mixture. This is done by means of a system designed and built by COMEX engineers called the dehydrinator. The hydrogen is oxidized and removed in the form of pure water at the rate of decompression selected.
During dehydrogenation, each of the divers was checked for circulating bubbles every three hours by means of Doppler detectors which recorded the signals on tape. No circulating bubbles were detected in any of the divers at any time during decompression. Decompression took 17 days and 20 hours, ending on December 18, 1986. A final study of narcosis on hydrogen was later carried out on four divers during Hydra 7 from January 5th to 20th, 1987. The divers were finally able to emerge from their chambers after a confinement of 28 days. They were met by COMEX President Deleuze, Dr. Fructus, Commander Cuyo, and all of the members of the scientific and technical staff. This diving operation is going to take place on this work platform, which will be lowered by crane to a depth of 520 meters. Offshore Marseille, the continental shelf is only 80 to 100 meters deep. So we have to carry out the operation offshore Cassis in Cassidegne Canyon, where the depth ranges from 500 to 2,500 meters. It's the only spot in the vicinity of Marseille. The work table is launched by a crane and will be lowered to the bottom by winch. The bell is disconnected from the chambers and begins its long descent to the bottom at 520 meters During the dive, the hydrogen mix is distributed from a specially designed container. Another container houses the analysis lab, where composition of the different gas mixes used for the operation is checked by chromatograph. There is a certain degree of suspense in the control room when the bell reaches 500 meters. The first diver is kitted up in the rather cramped space of the bell and lowered into the water by means of a small hoist. Alone under the bell in the glare of the spotlights, the first diver waits for his buddy. The second diver has put on the helmet hanging from the ceiling of the bell and goes out. The two divers are ready to proceed to the work table. They await orders from the surface. All of the physical and physiological data, core temperature, breathing, etc., is continually gathered by computer. The two divers follow the cord connecting the bell to the work table which is suspended from the Aurelia by wire rope. Four guide ropes secured to the bottom prevent the table from moving horizontally. The diver's first job is to make precise measurements of the position of the two pieces of pipe between which the spool piece is to be installed. They use the measuring equipment provided for this purpose. The judiciously combined counter effects of helium and hydrogen afford the divers a degree of breathing comfort 
as well as a general physical and mental well-being never before experienced below 300 meters on Heliox. The bellman, who is in communication with the divers, is ready to bring them back to the bell. After two hours and 25 minutes of work in the water, the two divers come back to the bell. The bellman recovers the diver umbilicals and coils them up. The diver is fastened to the hoist by his safety harness and raised into the bell to save him further exertion. Like the astronaut in space, the aquanaut leaves his habitat. The equipment is similar, as is the three-dimensional behavior, but the physical environment is quite different. Here there is an absolute pressure of 53 atmospheres. The submersible Griffon is on duty at its station with the operator inside. The divers here must be conferring about some technical problem or other. The spool piece is moved by means of overhead traveling cranes. On real offshore oil work sites, the divers often position huge spool pieces weighing dozens of tons. The material used for Hydra 8 may be smaller and lighter, but is nonetheless the same material actually used for offshore oil jobs. Now the flanges are aligned. The threaded shanks and nuts are positioned. The divers' movements prove they are completely at ease. After 45 minutes, the bell appears in the moon pool. As soon as it reaches the surface and the divers transfer into the living chambers, final decompression begins. Decompression lasted 17 days and 11 hours and went off without any problems. Decompression from hydrox is carried out by gradually removing the hydrogen in the mix, that is, dehydrogenating it from 500 to 300 meters. From 300 meters on, the divers breathe heliox. They're feeling great and are of course impatient to get out into the open air after being cooped up for 30 days. In the restricted space of the chamber control room, a crowd is waiting and all of the cameras are aimed at the pressure locked door, which finally opens on March 22nd, 1988 at 1700 hours. The COMEX and French Navy divers who participated in this Hydra 8 operation do their best to please the photographers. For Henri Delos, this latest success is the result of 25 years of untiring effort and research. A new era of industrial progress has begun beyond the sea depth of 500 meters. <laughs>